NBA playoff game just does not happen. And it goes far beyond the question we love to ask. Credit to the Hawks or blame to the Sixers. This is the essence of the sport today. We saw the hack of Simmons strategy invoked by Nick, Nate McMillan. We saw the fact that only two players on Philly scored a basket the entire second half. And once again, Doc Rivers and Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid are unable to close a door on a huge lead. So many moments in this could have changed everything. But now it's Hawks 3, Sixers 2 going back to Atlanta. Israel Gutierrez, how did this happen? <laughs> Well, normally I would blame a defense for letting the Hawks go as hot as they were in that fourth quarter. But you saw Lou Williams, Danilo Gallinari just kind of hitting some tough shots. So I'm not really going to blame the Sixers defense. On the offensive side, when you create a situation where the center of your universe is Joel Embiid and all you need is for some other parts to do something around him when he's working, then, yeah, that can work for you a lot of times, but it can be a detriment a lot of times. And yesterday, this was on Tobias Harris not showing up. This was on Ben Simmons being a non-factor, even outside of the free throws. He is a non-factor in that offense. He is not a threat to score. He's not really a threat to do much, even a turnover and dunk. He just seems to not be there in the fourth quarter, should probably not be on the floor. And if you want to go Korkmaz, anybody else on that team that did not perform, you can take it. But it's on everybody else outside of Embiid and Seth Curry because those are the only two people who showed up. Ben Simmons shouldn't even be on the floor in the fourth quarter. Frank Isola, how did this happen last night? You know, uh, you, to create a minor miracle, which what the, that's what that was for Atlanta, you have to try. So give the Atlanta Hawks a lot of credit for a young team still fighting when they were down 26 and they were down 24 with 14 minutes to go. But this is on the Sixers. All we ever hear about is trust the process. This was trust the collapse. And Embiid, he played well, but he missed two key free throws. But... Um, Izzy happens to be 100% right. All we heard was how the media blew it. Everybody blew it because Tobias Harris should have been an all-star. Where were you last night? And then for Ben Simmons, you want to be a superstar in this league, you got to get to the free throw line. And in the last two fourth quarters, he has attempted zero shots. So when you have Trey Young not afraid of the moment, how about Ben Simmons in the last two games, blowing an 18-point lead, blowing a 26-point lead, not doing anything in the most important quarter of the game? Clinton Yates, how did this happen? These guys have been over it. The Sixers absolutely blew this, but only two guys score in the second half from the field. You just can't win an NBA right. playoff game. It's as simple as that. It's a make-or-miss league, and with that many misses, you can't expect to be able to advance at this stage of the playoffs, which, however – is why I'm not necessarily yep. super-duper worried about the Sixers. This game isn't going to happen again. They're not blowing another 25-point lead, in my opinion. Now, if you want to say that Simmons is not in the offense the way that he should be, okay, I'll take that. But I can't see the Hawks being in the situation where they have to come back this far to beat somebody. But they got to play at home next, so that is so you, But overall, I think this is an aberration for the Sixers. An aberration, but to everything Israel and Frank said, this is Ben Simmons. He's not going to learn how to shoot free throws or jump shots overnight. Woody Page, I'll bring you in here. How did this happen? Well, Clinton Yates is from the Alfred E. Newman School of Dancing saying, what, me worry? You better get worried about your 76ers because uh, I'd love to give credit to the Atlanta Hawks, but a team from Fiji could have won and come back in the second half yesterday. I'm putting it on Simmons who everybody have already talked about with his triple single, he doesn't want to shoot the ball. He wants to stay away from the ball because he doesn't want to go to the free throw line. The guy's all world defensively, offensively. He is not even all YMCA. But I want to give discredit to the coach of this team, Doc Rivers. It's not like this is his first rodeo. Five of the eight blown leads, biggest blown yeah. leads of the last two postseason have been coached by yep. Doc Rivers. And I wonder, as a guy who's been covering this league for 50 years, why in the world don't you call some plays, Doc Rivers, so that somebody else can get involved? Yes, you can use more people, but I don't see any backdoor screens. I don't see moving <laughs> the ball from one side of the court to the other. I'm not seeing any call plays unless you've got a blackboard in your hand in this league anymore. Well, okay, I, I mean, I have to imagine he was calling plays, Woody. I have to imagine that is real, right? I mean, that's not it is. But what Woody said is absolutely but, true. Tony, I mean, 18-point blown lead, a 26-point blown lead, back-to-back -back games. How does that happen? No, I do got to put some of this on Doc. I mean, you remember there was a moment there where he yep. and Tobias Harris were, were talking and they seemed confused. And Tobias, it seemed like Doc's answer was just drive it. 
drive it to the hole if I'm reading lips and body language properly. And it's just, I mean, Tobias Harris is a 20 point a game score for them, but just short of that. He had four points yesterday. There was something off. He's not new to this team. There was something that was not really working there for that offense. And they never figured it out throughout the second half. They just went to Embiid over and over again and tried to find Seth off. And of Frank Isola. You know, Tony, Shaquille O'Neal was not a great free throw shooter, but in the moment, he, he wanted the ball. Even Giannis Antetokounmpo, he's not afraid of the moment. And for Ben Simmons, someone had a tweet, I apologize not remembering the person's name, they had an unbelievable stat, that he's already missed 45 free throws in 10 playoff games this postseason. Steve Nash, for his wow. entire postseason wow. career, missed 44. Think about that. That's amazing. It's an amazing stat. Actually, now that you remind me, I'll find who wrote that tweet, and I'll give them the points. Frank, guys. So we had some people on this go. panel I'll yesterday I didn't take, who, I didn't while it. the hacka, hacka Ben was happening, was, was making fun of it. Like, oh, what are they doing? They're down by 26, and they're hacking. That person, who we call and guest on this show. Pablo. <laughs> well, it seems like that strategy worked out pretty well. So yep. just to recap, Clint Yates, you think... Every loss is a good thing. You, oh, no, nothing to worry about here. You still got filled up. Is anybody leaning towards Atlanta now? I don't think because they – Go ahead. Listen, their record when they were up by 25 beforehand was everything and oh. I don't think that's going to happen Every twice. team's if they get a that. decent effort. If, if they get a decent effort out of their actual starters, I think that they're far closer to this than people realize. It was a terrible off night as evidenced by what, you know, Alfred e. Newman down there in Denver said. We've been horrible. We'll move on. How the Clippers beat the Jazz last night without Kawhi Leonard, which – Everybody thought it was impossible. Everybody, but it happened. So now everybody has to say his name. Say it, Paul George. Playoff, playoff, P. All right. Uh, thank you very much, Clinton, for playing the game. Frank, I sold. I heard. I didn't hear from everybody here. Clippers one went away from doing what they've never done before: make the conference finals. See why? How did this happen? You know. Playoff P gets all the props for this game because he had the biggest number and it was easy to point at him as the guy that hadn't showed up. But I still think the guy who had the best game was Reggie Jackson. I still think he's been the best player on that team over these last two games in the series. He was filling it up. Marcus Morris was filling it up. Unlike the Sixers, every single player in that starting lineup brought it for the Clippers, and that's what made them who they are. I realize the Jazz are throwing up a lot, and they don't have Mike Conley, so they're not the same team. But the Clippers finally put it together in a place where they needed to. And while Paul's numbers were the biggest, he wasn't necessarily the only one getting it done, and that's a formula for success. For Woody Page, have you come to praise Playoff P? Yeah, it was Playoff P versus Playoff P down your leg is what the Utah Jazz did after right. starting well, off shooting do. threes all the time. Well, okay, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> Apology but, accepted. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much. Go ahead. <laughs> but the uh, Utah Jazz just totally went to the three-pointer. You live by the three-pointer, you know what happens. Yeah. And that's exactly what yep. happened there. Uh, once again, I'm going to put the I'm going to put the blame on a coach. But Utah really didn't continue to be aggressive. They just continued to go one-on-one, -on -one, shoot from the three because it was working earlier. When you get up on teams, you've got to actually continue to do what you do best throughout the series, not in one quarter. And so Paul George, we've seen his we, we we've seen his greatness in the past. However, the problem is, can he keep this up if he has to do it by himself? Can he get enough? Okay. I mean, he has I'm been having sure thirty point games in this series. Israel Gutierrez, Woody's he's touching upon something with the Jazz. They've gotten away from well, who they are is a three point shooting team, and they're missing Mike Conley. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard's absence is enormous. Yeah. Conley's is very large too. Go ahead. Yeah, Woody, I don't think you uh, need to apologize for that joke. I was a fan. Um, I do think that uh, play, I, I can't say it. Paul, <laughs> Paul George. I can't do the nickname. It's just that bad. I think Paul George led the way here. And, you know, of his 22 shots, he was 12 of 22, 21 of those were contested. So he was on his game and he sort of led the way. And you can, you know, make the argument he gave his teammates confidence because they seemed to just follow him into the second half. And yeah, Reggie Jackson was huge. A lot of those players were huge. Luke Kennard hit a couple of big threes there right when they needed it. But I think with the Jazz, what's interesting about Donovan Mitchell to me is it seems like that when times get tougher, he ends up taking tougher shots. He's got the ability to yeah. get to the rim, and he doesn't do that enough. He also has that pull-up three ability, and it seems like sometimes that shot can be unbothered from like 35 feet and in, but it seems like he takes that at sort of bailout times where they're down seven with two minutes left. You can get more going to the rim that way. That's the one complaint I had about the Jazz offense because obviously Mike Conley not being there affects them. Frank Isola, how did the Clippers do this? Yeah. 
I, Izzy just gave us Hubie Brown. He's 100% right. You know, Donovan Mitchell, when, when he's being crowded at the three-point line, his idea isn't to put the ball on the floor and go to the basket. His idea is to back up about four steps and take a shot. He took some really bad shots. But come on, guys. Paul George has been so maligned. Everybody's been teeing off on this poor guy. They show up at the arena last night. They don't have Kawhi Leonard. He might not play again. And this is the Clippers we're talking about. That is one of the greatest wins in the history of that franchise. And, and Paul George was the one that led them with 37 points. He answered a lot of questions last night. That's a big time, big time. All right, Frank, I told you we'd find the name Anthony Doyle, Raptors Republic. There he is. That is the All source right. of the great That's stat the that Frank got points Wait, for. Sorry, I'm taking Anthony. them away from Frank, <laughs> and I'm giving them to you. That's what I'm doing here. Taking a break right here. Buy or sell Good job, next. Anthony. Whoa. Giannis on Durant. Does that have to happen tonight for the Bucks to survive? Why not? I think you took points away from him twice, by the way. Just FYI. <laughs> That's at Bucks tonight. What happens to Kevin Durant's all-time, all-time game five if Giannis and Budenholzer and the Bucks? Somehow remember how to basketball tonight. And Milwaukee takes six and seven. I mean, it's it's an interesting question. The weight on Durant is massive again, but the pressure on Giannis and the combo tonight is super galactic. So, Frank, Durant's, Durant's encore. The Bucks' response. What will decide the game six to nine? Well, it'll be interesting to see how many minutes Kevin Durant plays. I don't think he's going to go for all 24 in the first half. You know, it's funny. Everyone's talking about Giannis maybe guarding him, and I think that'll happen. Remember, Durant was 6 for 9 in the fourth quarter. All nine of those shots were contested. The big issue was Brooke Lopez struggling out there in the defensive end. I would start Giannis at center and play a little bit so-called smaller and quicker against the uh, Brooklyn Nets. Israel Gutierrez. Just want the Bucks to play more like themselves, and that includes Mike Budenholzer's decision making. Like, for example, Bobby Portis has been great for them all season long off the bench. He hasn't played lately. Why not? The dude spreads the floor. He shot 47% from three. They just seem to be trying too hard or doing too much differently. When if they just played to their identity, they could probably. Be Are they the doing things differently? Problem. They're they're struggling at the end of games, and they're struggling in the second round. That's who they've been, Israel. Woody Page, how is tonight one? Well, Frank, you blew right by Giannis guarding Durant. And when he did guard him in the first quarter of the last game, uh, Durant missed two shots. He can get his hand right in Durant's face. Here's a guy that's on the all-defensive team annually, and you don't put him on the best player on the other team. That's what you got to do. That's going to turn this game So around. the number one change, Woody Page says, is Durant gets guarded by Giannis. And maybe that gets Giannis right on the other end, too. I, I like it, Woody. Clint Yates, how about you? To me, the number one change is on the offensive end. 24% of their shots they took at the rim compared to 27% for Brooklyn, except they made 18 of 19 from that point. Forget all this mid-range stuff. You got the biggest team in the daggone conference. Get to the rack, and maybe you'll get to the free throw line, and you'll stay in some games. You saw that uh, in the play where Giannis took the fadeaway over James Harden, who was dragging his leg up and down the court. Make the call for tonight, Frank Isola, to the Bucks survive. I think the Bucks will win. We'll get a game seven. Is it real? We're going to game six. Woody Page. The Bucks don't stop here. Yates. <laughs> Durant blows up again. PG County's finest. All right, so you've got Brooklyn and Durant after the 48 minutes taking it tonight. We'll move on. Garrett Cole's second public comments about the new rules for pitchers. Roll tape. It's so hard to grip the ball. For Pete's sake, it's part of the reason why almost every player on the field has, has something, regardless if they're a pitcher or not, to help them control the ball. Please just, please just talk to us. Please just work with us. I know you have the hammer here. We've been living in a gray area for so long. Um, I would just hate to see players get hurt. I would, I would hate to see balls start flying at people's heads. Woody, buy or sell coal? I'm actually going to buy it. I think baseball needs to get a grip, and I mean that pun. It's intended. Know. I know the commissioner needs to call in about five or six of these top pitchers and say, let's talk about it. Let's pause it until next year, and let's see if we can't work on it better. New Coke didn't work out. They went back to regular Coke. Go back to what you were it's doing Gutierrez. 
Well, I appreciate his honesty there, and you can, the part that uh, I appreciated most where he said we've been in this gray area for so long, and that's just the flat out truth. And you can see sort of the exasperation from a few of these pitchers. So I would be in favor of sort of pausing it, maybe still finding a way to, to, to get a, a grip on that really oh, sticky stuff and, and just keeping some of the lighter, some of the lighter uh, substances in. But I definitely think it's something you should push toward the off season and just have, let them sort of phase this out. Frank, last week we heard from Cole, really didn't even put a sentence together when he was addressing this. How did you hear him this yeah. time around? I'll tell you what, Woody and Izzy with the get a grip line, I mean, it's so tacky. Here's, here's the thing about pitchers like Eric Cole. I think it's, it's always been accepted that the pitcher has control of the ball. Why all of a sudden are we changing it in the middle of the season? I agree with the players here. I think the commissioner's office is way out of line. And Clint Yates. I bought it last time when he had the Zoom free snafu because he was telling the truth and he was opening up the discussion about what's really happening. You've seen so many different players been able to list all the issues that effectively is going to come down to a collective bargaining agreement one in the offseason, but at least we're talking about it. I'm glad they're being straight up about what's actually harming them or what's affecting them. Can you see life. baseball playing, putting this rule change on pause for the rest of the season? I do. I mean, if honestly I think they wanted to do something, they would have gone about this on the low, even if they were discussing it. You have this discussion before the season, but you've got the All-Star break coming up so you can sort of regroup and figure out what you're going to do. Israel Gutierrez, Frank Isola, taking a break right here. Not sticking, not sticking around? Oh, man. Give you one more. Nice effort, Ben Simmons. Clinton Yates, Woody Page, showdown in two minutes. <laughs> what, me? Worries?